Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I'm, you notice I'm using a flat too. Um, and that isn't a dry paper. Uh, I can, if I was, if this was upright on the easel, it, uh, I could be doing this, not worrying much about dripping and things. It's a relatively dry brush too. And uh, I'm really, I'm just drawing more than anything else. So, yeah. Thank you, Julie. Yeah, I love quins too. That's a lot easier than spelling quinacridone than down or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, can you maybe bump it up a little bit? Yeah, I really don't. I, I established these shadows and. Uh, you got to shut it out. Pardon? Calling this report intentionally false, explaining that 60 Minutes refused to hear his side of the story. And here's the mayor speaking oh. out there today. Take a look. I participated in speaking with the producer of 60 Minutes for probably over 45 minutes and getting. <laughs> Roxanne, I wanted to hear the rest of that. What'd you do? <laughs> can you uh, can you bump it up a few seconds, Roxanne? Maybe till we get to another color. Or... Yeah, there you go. All right, another another one of my quinacridones. Uh, quinacridone orange, bur uh, burnt orange. And uh, a little bit of quinacridone gold getting stuck in here. And, oh, yeah, my self-esteem wasn't bad enough. Now look at this, yeah. <laughs> Looked like a gorilla head, didn't it? <laughs> Okay, so I've got my warm uh, my 60 areas. Of debate and prompted strong reactions. Yes, I'm hearing lots of strong reactions. Uh, there's a lot of uh, negative space in the trees there. Uh, that's what I'm doing there. Okay, now I'm, I'm moving on. I'm gonna, I've lifted it up and I'm going to uh, start using a, one of my rounds. And I wanna show you these rounds. Uh, found these on Amazon too. These brushes are incredibly cheap and are, are of an incredible quality, I think. I just stumbled onto them by accident. Uh, these are Degato brushes, and I doubt you'll be able to see the, the name there. But they're really nice brushes. Uh, a set of, what was it, 16, Roxanne? We looked it up. It was like $13 or $14, and they, they have a nice red sable, and they're, they're, they're just great brushes. So I suggest you uh, look into them. Okay. So I kind of do a a um, a process of color mixing process straight on to uh, straight onto the paper. Let the uh, colors mix themselves. I'm spilling out the gato. There we go. Okay, so I started with the yellow. Uh, now I did, this is brown matter. Actually, my, my favorite red in the field, especially. Uh, thank you, sorry, yellow is Windsor yellow. So let me go ahead, I'll, I'll put this here. Uh, Windsor yellow.
go. So there, the winds are yellow, the brown matter, and the ultramarine blue. Um, I'm, I could do pretty much any watercolor painting I wanted to with those. Uh, minus the sexy colors, I could still get a, you know get away with doing uh, some pretty good paintings with just those three colors. Uh, of course, I love to have my quinacridones and uh, my cobalt and you know things like that, especially for the red rocks. But I could still manage with just those colors. And uh, anyway, and you know, I, I would I would suggest you try that if you don't do that. Uh, force yourself to a very limited palette. Okay. All right, now the uh, this is something else too. The the warm colors in the foreground are going to be more vivid uh, and and warmer than the ones in the background. That's why I went with the brown matter. Uh, it's going to bring these trees forward, even though they are going to be uh, quite muted and the edges soften by the time this is over. Uh, we do want the, the the heavier, warmer colors in the front. And I'm putting the, the ultramarine blue just right over the top of this, and it's pretty heavy for this nocturne. Okay, the red and the yellow wouldn't be quite so heavy, heavily pigmented. When I say heavy, you know, opaque with a, with the pigment. If this is a daytime scene, uh, but because it is a nocturne, I'm, I'm really laying the sauce on there. Extra heavy pigment. So. Okay. So hey, Eureka! Eureka is a fun town. I'm gonna go back there someday, and paint some more. Um, any, there's a gorilla head again. Uh, if anybody that is here that was uh, that was at Eureka, that uh, you can testify that was a lot of fun. I think. I didn't recognize you without uh, your cowboy hat. <laughs> Who is that? Who's who's yelling at me? Uh, <laughs> Sherry Mydell. Oh, hi, Sherry. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, y'all know, boy, y'all know how to leave town, Sherry. Man. I looked around, everybody was gone. I was still painting. <laughs> yep, everybody kind of took off. I uh I stopped at that. I went back to um, Santa Quin for a minute and got a little nap, and then went back to that pass where you come from Eureka and to Santa Quin, and you can see down in the valley. I, I made another painting there. Oh, nice! I don't know if you saw it. Yeah. The one that was on the left. Uh no! Here, here. Okay, I'm starting to, uh, in the video there, I'm starting to layer the the uh, same shadow on the mountains. There, I don't know if you can see that. Nice. And then one, one more plain here is that where you go back down into Santa Quin, it was, it was just a stunning view. Pretty. Thank Too bad you didn't go to Payson. Pardon? Too bad you didn't go into Payson. Is somebody here from Payson? <laughs> yes, I am. Dina Millicum. Dina, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, my dad is a fruit farmer there, and we grew up there. <laughs> In Payson. Janice. Yeah, Janice, I actually stood close to the razor this time. Yeah. I was standing too far away before. It's um, basically, uh, let's see, Karen, um, it was basically just the contour of the major abstract shapes. I didn't use it in the, sh like, inside of the shadows there, uh, just the main uh, area of the mountain. 
like I said, I, I kind of use it as a reservoir to keep my washes in. Uh, and there's times, there's a lot of paintings where I'll, I'll use a lot of miscuit, you know, and uh, not just areas I want to stay white, but uh, I want them to stay pristine. Let's see. I'll try to show you on this one. Uh, and this isn't a very good view of it. This is on Facebook, too, if you want to see it. But like these highlight areas uh, right in here in this background and on these rocks here, uh, I put Miskit on that to begin with. And then paint everything around it, and even though it has uh, has color inside of it, uh, it's kind of good to keep that area clean and pristine until I'm ready to to um, to add the actual color in. And it looks more like a highlight; it looks more like reflected light. Um, when I first started getting into this, you know, I saw a lot of uh, watercolor artists that you know say don't don't use miskit. Uh, I'm 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 kind of hooked on it. I can't quit. So plus, you know, I, this has been about two or three, well, three or four now, three or four years ago. Uh, I never used watercolor other than just in a uh, kind of like a sketchbook kind of setting. I never, you know, use it to make serious paintings. Uh, but I went to a workshop, and some of y'all might remember this from other talks. Uh, oh, my gosh. Cindy Barron, that's her name. Not a workshop, but a demo. Uh, Cindy Barron did a demo here in Ogden. And uh, she used a technique where and she used a lot of this PBO drawing gum. And she made paint. I swear her, her brush didn't even touch the paper. She would just take her brush and just flick these washes on, you know. And that's another thing I do uh, when you when you see me painting here. I'm just I'm using a very light touch when I put these washes on because, as you know, if if you got an underpainting such as this, if I get heavy-handed with a brush, I'm actually doing some lifting when I put another color on top of it. Uh, has anybody else experienced that? You kind of just wipe out what you've done underneath it. Uh, but if you use a light touch and just just let it go out on its own, let the let the thing paint itself, and it it uh, it seems to work really well. It's quite charming, as a matter of fact. So, and I'm not gonna lie, I I I do things a little bit different. You know, I actually use this as uh, kind of a chance to experiment. I use quite a bit of the quinacridone rose. I wouldn't do that again. Uh, it turned out quite violet, quite purple. You'll see in the end. It's not a bad thing. It looked really good, but, uh, you know, it, it may be in a little bit too on the violet side. So. How are we doing? Great. Everybody still with me? You have 43 with you. <laughs> hmm. Wow. Was, is Tom Howard with us? I don't think so. Oh, okay. I wanted to aggravate him. So. Okay, I switched over to a mop brush, as you can see. What is that in my hair? Now oh, there you go. And all those uh, beautiful warm colors underneath I'm just doing a light wash over the top. Are you using ultramarine on this wash? 
Uh, I may. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I do have a little cobalt in there. That might be using the cobalt. Okay. Miss Ann, I was not dabbing, as far as you know. <laughs> yeah, that's another another no no that I like to employ. I'm I'm sorry, I can't quit. Can't quit dabbing. <laughs> Is Best Ann with us? Do you know? You out there, Best Ann? I didn't see Best Ann. Oh man, two of my painting heroes aren't here. That's oh, at least I got Nathan for sure. There you go. And Christy, is she still around? <laughs> Everyone, I, I haven't seen any bad painters in this group. You know, I've seen some really, really. It's, it's humble just to be a part of this group, much less being asked to present to it. I mean. Um, there's, I've learned a whole lot from you guys. I just want you to know that. Well, thank you for being willing to do this. Uh, I, I'm humbled. I'm honored. Thank you very much. Okay, that, um, that's your black. Uh-huh. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah. Uh, that's, well, this is actually Sax. Oh, where did you go? There we go. That's actually Sax, but Sax or Dick Blick, they make a, and I've discovered them from, um, um, you know, teaching high school, but I really like using their, their black. It's concentrated watercolor. Huh? Um, so uh, it's relatively inexpensive. Uh, the light, light fastness, I, I checked it one time. It's, it's pretty good. It's comparable to, to uh, a lot of uh, the watercolors we use. So it's not like I'm, you know, using bad watercolors. It's, it's fairly good quality. And it has kind of a greenish hue to it. It's kind of a greenish black if you, if you spread it out. So... Uh, because you know if you use it you're going to have to account for that if you want it to be black black you're going to have to add a little bit of some kind of red to it because uh, it's going to come out with a greenish hue and that could be a desired effect you know when, when i'm doing uh I, I don't use it a whole lot just mainly in the nocturnes things like that or i have a spray bottle of it that i'll, I'll use in uh kind of do some uh oh what do you call it when the edges are fuzzy uh, kind of a um effect where you know you'll, you'll see because i'm going to spray some on later but uh oh it's right on the tip of my tongue it's it's a setting on your phone even when you're when you're adjusting photos feathering pardon feathering Vignette, yes, vignette. Thank you, Julie. Yeah, y'all, I'm 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 not as smart as I look. Okay, yeah, just <laughs> Lord help me. Be smart to me. Yeah. <laughs> me too. No. I love. Thank you, Julie. Where's your dog? I don't know. Where's Nacho? Yeah, where's yeah. Nacho? I was wondering when that was going to come up. That's that's funny. I roll into the Monarch. Hey, Steve, where's Nacho? Hey, yeah, you doing okay? That's good. Where's Nacho? Yeah, <laughs> he's at home living the high life. <laughs> he's probably under a blanket, you know, licking himself now and then, getting a treat from mom. <laughs> Just living the life. Yeah. You don't need to be quite so specific. <laughs> Well, I, didn't, I didn't say I where. I you know? finally got on this Zoom thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
No, I'm joking. <laughs> I've been so frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we are. Who's here? Okay. How are we doing on time? Is this this running okay? Yeah, it's running great. You're um. Here, you got about. Here's where I'm really really pushing the shadows with this black. And it's, it's kind of hard to see that it looks almost opaque black on this video. But if, if you're if you're meeting this in person, uh, you can see that uh, a lot of that underpainting still comes through. Still comes through. And now these little mid-ground rocks here, I, it's really uh, not that necessary. If I was uh, doing this again, I might rethink. See that little uh, area on the left between the trees and the background mountains? I've done some boulders and things, kind of made a middle ground. And that's one of those decisions. I don't I don't know if, if that adds to the painting. Uh, maybe I wouldn't do that again. And, you know, it doesn't exactly uh, distract, but... Uh, I, I'm kind of I'm I'm still struggling with, you know, uh, what do I leave out? <laughs> My brother, oh sorry, Kathy. My brother-in-law is a mayor of Eureka. Wow, I didn't know you were a celebrity, Kathy. Next time, let me know. I'm getting you some mining bill. Oh, wow. Where's Silver City? Is that close to Eureka? Oh, let me type this in. So again, that is a uh, Dick Blick concentrated watercolor. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, I've obviously I've turned my painting over. And I'm going with a little bit of ultramarine and, and then back to my black. I'm just going straight from, I'm not cleaning my brush out. I went with the ultramarine and started adding the black. And uh, just doing a, more of like a, a traditional wash. And it just get kind of blacker and blacker as uh, I go down downhill with my wash. And this is on a slight slant. Uh, And those of you, I, I'm sure you, I'm, I'm sure you guys know this, uh, and I don't mean to insult your intelligence, but you know, I, I don't, uh, I don't assume any anybody's skill level or what they've, even has to do with the skill level, just what they, tricks they do or don't know. But uh, if you want a nice clean wash, you, you can see I've got like a, a a bead of material of that watercolor, that paint. At the bottom, the blow the wash. You got to keep that wet and keep that bead there, otherwise it'll get really streaky. And I'm sure you've experienced that trying to paint a large area, one nice flat color. Uh, this is this is a good way to do it. Y'all can see I'm really laying the the concentrate of the black on, uh, just like you would see the night sky. The night sky, just like the day sky, gets lighter towards the horizon, typically. Okay. And it uh, looks, looks pretty blotchy here, um, but it, it was kind of a nice, nice uh, wash. That little last little thing I did, I, I wanted to kind of give the uh, illusion of some clouds there. Okay. Okay, pause this. Can you pause this for a second, Roxanne? Roxanne? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, the, the cloud thing there, you can see right above my noggin. I wouldn't. That's another decision that uh, I would have wouldn't have made. Oh, we backed up. Did you hit the reverse? I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, you might. But anyway, we get back, you've got your. We get back to. Pardon me. You uh, you used your uh, um, mask to make little stars to begin with, too. I sure did. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. Yeah, there are little uh, bits of little 
uh, bits of the uh, um, PBO yeah. drawing gum. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, PBO drawing gum up in the, as, as stars. I actually have a little bit. If you can see in the lower right hand corner, there's two spray bottles. The one on the bottom actually has a wee bit of that uh, PBO drawing gum in it, kind of thinned down with some water. And uh, you can you can do some crazy things with that too. So there's actually some parts of that. It's just a little spritz of that in the sky as well, and in some other areas. But it kind of kind of makes for that uh, Milky Way effect. So. Okay, you can go ahead, Roxanne. Which brings me, you know, to to the spray bottles themselves. Uh, whatever town you live in, I'm sure it has a Dollar Tree, and the best dollar bill you can spend, I think, is uh, on these little spray bottles. You can get three packs of these spray bottles. You can get three spray bottles for a dollar, or you can get uh, two of the, the dispensing bottles and one spray bottle and a package for a dollar. And I have gotten so much use out of those. Um, but basically, all my colors, almost every color in my palette, I'll have a spray bottle mixed up with that color. I just take some water and thin it down to whatever viscosity, you know, uh, opacity of color that I want. And you can do some crazy good things. Uh, you got to be willing to take risks. You can sure mess a, a painting up. But, hey, that's what we're about, right? Taking risks. So, And I, I'm going to – kind of the opposite of what I did with the, the foreground and the mountains, I'm going to spray warm colors on top of the cool colors this time. I'm just going to get that that um, washed area. I'm going to get it wet again, just slightly. And then I'm going to take my uh, kosher salt there. You can see. It's really hard to see on the video, uh, but I'm, I'm getting some uh, salt blossoms on there. And it, it really, and Roxanne, you can testify. It's, you really think you're looking at a Milky Way, right? I mean, it's, it's, true. That's really, it's, that was really fun to watch. Suddenly the Milky Way just appeared. <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah, yeah. See, all this is is gimmicks, y'all. It's just gimmicks, bells and whistles. <laughs> but. Well, there's a tremendous amount of skill behind those gimmicks, too. You just got to remember which ones work. I really like this uh, this nocturne thing, though. I mean, uh, I, I've done some plein air nocturnes, uh, and if you haven't, if you don't paint plein air, y'all, uh, yeah, 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 I'll get to that in just just a second. Uh, but if you don't paint plein air, I suggest you do. It's uh, it's where all the answers are. And because I've had that experience with painting plein air of nocturnes, not, not scenes, I'm able to uh, translate pretty much any painting I have. All I have to do is shift values and, and color temperatures and, and uh, like I said, a few little gimmicks and ta-da, there's, uh, there's a nocturne. Uh, let me see. I had a question about the detail on the type and size of the needle for the bottles. Um, if you'll let me look at Amazon's on my phone, I can give you an answer. So give me just a second. You can uh, maybe see in the meantime that I have uh, taken all the miscut off now. Okay. So we'll let that run for a second and
Your orders. No, not the pickles. Okay. They're 15 milliliter needle tip glue guns or blue bottles. Excuse me. Here, I'll top out the. Uh, the brand is Agomet. Thirty piece. The bottles are fifteen mil. And it doesn't give a size for the, the tip. Okay. I've arrived late. What what's in the bottle? Did you say something about salt or masking fluid? Uh, yeah, the masking fluid is in the little needle tip bottle. And it, oh, by the way, you can see um, up in the trees there, there's where I, I pulled out some of those branches and stuff. That was also the misket. Okay. Um, let's see what I'm, Roxanne, what am I doing here? You oh, I'm taking off the misket out of the sky. The sky is dry, so I'm pulling out the stars and. And just in a, a very few stars, not all of them, just a, a select few, two or three tops. Uh, I just take some either either clean water or uh, a color, and uh, just a very light color, and I put some just just a little bit on the white spot where the misket was, and then I dab it out, and it makes kind of a halo kind of a sun dog around the star it looks looks really really cool okay and now you can see where i, I have the uh there's a white edge where that misket was okay uh and i did that intentionally because i want to go back in and soften that edge one thing i learned painting landscapes uh, edges are so important and uh and watercolor things tend to get really graphic really quick and uh, if, if that's something that you like to do, it works for you, uh, that's great. But I like to, to soften my edges, uh, especially in things that are in the, disc, the, the distance. And I use a rubber cement pickup is what they call it to remove the misket. Um, those of you that have been around long enough, you, you know, cut and paste used to actually be <laughs> cutting things out and pasting them with rubber cement. And, uh, and basically the way it, for all you youngsters out there, you put rubber cement on whatever you're pasting up on, onto the substrate. And then on the back of whatever you've cut out, okay, you let them both dry put them together and burnish them and they're stuck. But around the edges, there's little little boogies of rubber cement. And they uh, came up with, it's called a rubber cement pickup. It's basically dried up rubber cement, I think. But it just, it just pulls that rubber cement off of there. And it works great for this misket. But you, oh yeah, back to the uh, dollar store has these pick, really? The dollar store has it? Hmm. I didn't know that. That's good news. Okay. Um, for those of you that aren't on the chat there, uh, somebody said you can get the rubber cement pickups at the dollar store. Heck yeah. Hold on. Let me plug this in so I don't go dead. I've even, I'm boring my computer to death. Good grief. <laughs> Where are you? No, there you are. 
All right. Maybe I'm going to die now. Got to soften the edges and uh, on everything pretty much. Especially on the trees in the foreground. I really wanted to, to uh, blur those out. And um, what I tell my students, in my high school students or, you know, my, my adult classes, one of my favorite analogies, uh, especially when it comes to painting landscapes, is you have to decide what the what you want to shine, okay? And if I, I like to use the analogy, if if I had assembled like the five greatest musicians in the world, you know, the best guitar player, the best sax player, the best keyboardist, the best drummer, if I got them all together and composed the perfect piece of music, and I said, okay, on three, you I want you all do your solo, okay? And they all played it at once. It would it would sound like a train wreck, okay? and that that applies visually too. Okay, you want kind of one thing to really stand out and shine, which for me is the face of that rock there. And uh, even though the the white of the area below it stands out, I, I think the star of the show is the face of that cliff there. And uh, everything else, I, I, I want to complement it. That's why I really spend a lot of time softening edges okay? and uh, making things try to stand out where they, they count the most. So, does that make sense? You don't want you don't want everything doing a solo in your painting. Okay, you want uh, one one star of your show, and then you want everything to just complement that star. So. And that even goes for abstract paintings, you know. The best ones are, are the ones that uh, that have they, they tend to have a harmony because, you know, not everything is trying to get your attention at once. It's it's all leading to something. All right, we are pretty much at the end. Okay. Beautiful. Yes. Am I going to get my hand out of the way or? don't remember <laughs> but there it is there it is okay i um if it's okay uh steve let me let's you know what was uh, interesting to watch steve work was the way he he uses the little bottles of watercolor and then spray mm -hmm. bottles of watercolor for every color he has so that's uh he doesn't he doesn't work um like I do from a, dry, a palette with dried up uh, watercolor that I put water on. No, it's all yeah. ready to go. And he uses this very high tech um, ice ice cube tray to uh, <laughs> pour his colors in. So Steve, we're gonna have you to stop share. Okay. And then if it's all right, I'm gonna spotlight you and uh, maybe you can show us what the other one behind you is. And by chance, do you have the one that got into uh, Western Fed there? Yes, I do. It's also a nocturnal. And y'all can see this on the website too, a better picture of it, but this yeah. you can see how the size of it. There we go. Yeah. So does anybody else is it just me? I I just can't paint small in watercolor. I just can't do it. I mean I can, but I like having a lot of area to, to move colors around on. So Well. But that's a beautiful, beautiful watercolor. Oh, thank you. All right. Anybody have any questions for Steve? No questions. Well, as, as I say, I came uh, late and I'm still not sure what you put in those bottles. I heard you say something about your spray bottles, uh, something with salt. I mean, we that's an old, do you use that? Mm -hmm. That's an old thing. Yeah. You like so that? the spray bottles, I have pretty much all of my colors. Uh, 
and I'll get to the the what is mounted to here in just a second. Yes, it is mounted on board. Let me answer this question. Um, but just a little bit of pigment and a lot of water, and just shake the devil out of it, and uh, you have spray. You have the uh, almost like a spray gun of watercolor. You can do some fun things with it. Uh, this last class, uh, very successful class I had, and, and a very successful technique I came up with. Uh, well, I didn't come up with it. Yes, yeah, definitely not mine. Artists are like teachers; we're just notorious thieves, and uh, and that's a good thing. You know, we we take from we don't really steal from each other. I mean, I think we freely give or figure things out, but uh, but. Basically, I could take uh, and tear out a mountain shape out of paper and uh, make a template and spray uh, kind of a cool color and make background mountains with this uh, spray watercolor. And what I did when this piece, uh, the night sky, you asked about using salt. The night sky was painted that black, that dark color. I let it dry. And then I took some of that uh, quinacridone orange and quinacridone pink or uh, rose and i did some spray in on there just a light spray to get it reconstituted get it wet again and then uh, just by using the salt it blossoms like you know it does but it pulls that black pigment out too and and that that color shines through just like when you look up at down in tory i'm still just still just blown away by the magnificence of the milky way from that that goosenecks and we just had just a little bit of moon, and the Milky Way was just, I mean, it was just exploding. And you could see all these colors. And uh, the painting doesn't do it justice, but you can kind of get a little bit of feel of the colors that are actually coming from the uh, Milky Way. Yeah. What my board is mounted on, my painting is mounted on um, gator foam. And this is... It's like a foam core on steroids, if you're not familiar with gator foam. And I mount my piece to my, my piece. I mount my paper before I even start painting uh, to this gator foam. I use either acrylic medium. Uh, Mod Podge works pretty good. Uh, and uh, I've used top bond glue with my canvases and things, but I don't think it would stay waterproof. So I usually use a good acrylic medium, kind of the thicker stuff. And uh, I spread it out on the gator foam, put my paper down, tape the edges, and then put some books on top of it for a while. So, and uh, it works pretty good. And if you come to my class, uh, that's what you'll get your half sheet on. I'll have it mounted for you. So you know what it's like to paint on that. It's, it's really a pleasure. There is no stress. I have yet to ever stretch a piece of watercolor paper. Uh, when I use a 300 pound, uh, when I first started, I would just tape it to a board. Um, let's see, Janice and, and uh, Dina, they're out there. They, they can tell you that uh, if you take one of my classes, you'll get that board and it seems to work pretty good. It's so. wonderful because it doesn't buckle. Right, yeah. yeah. I like painting on it. it was, it's pretty handy. Thank you. Yeah. And you can beat the heck out of it, you know, and as far as, you know, lifting and scrubbing and pouring and you'll get a bubble every once in a while. I mean, cause you can only take so much, you know, uh, but other than that, it's, it's, it'll settle back down. So What kind of paper do you use? Okay, uh, arches. This one, uh, actually, what what I did the demo on was uh, Blick watercolor paper. It's a student grade watercolor paper, and it's it's pretty good paper. It's 140 pound, but I wouldn't suggest that for you know if professionally doing it. I I like using arches. Uh, there's 156 pound arches that I like. Uh, I really like a lot. And uh, it's the one that comes in a 40 by 26 sheet that you can get at the Blick store in Salt Lake. I really like that the texture of that paper, the weight of that paper, the, the tooth. Um, 
Also, I love the you know the three hundred pound arches. You know? But um, but yeah, one hundred and forty pound works really good when it's mounted to this gator foam. Is that cold press? Or yes, hard ma press? Yes, ma'am. Cold press. I like cold press. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm not, you know, I don't have an affinity to uh, using hot press. I, I've used it before and get some pretty cool results. Uh, I just, I can be more aggressive, it seems like, with the cold press. So. Steven, that painting behind you. Yes, ma'am. On ma most of these with the gator board, do you not mat them? You just frame them? And how do you put that in that frame like that? Okay, that is a floater frame. Okay, and basically there's a little ledge on the inside of it that the, the painting is stuck to. Okay. Oh, good grief. Sorry about that. Pretty. But uh, yeah, I, because it's mounted to the board, uh, I like to use a product. Uh, it's basically a beeswax. It's called co-wax medium. You're using oil paintings and if you take that and you can buff it put it on your painting and kind of buff it out and it creates a barrier and, and you have a basically you can mount this with uh, and frame it without glazing which uh the brianne brown uses that technique um, there's a kid named richie Vios. anybody ever heard of him but he's a watercolor painter from texas and He's kind of setting the plain air world on fire. Uh, I'm going to get to paint with him in, in Maryland in June, by the way, and I'm looking forward to that. But but he varnishes his stuff, too. I'm not sure if he uses a cold wax medium. What's but, the uh, again? It's cold wax medium. Oh, I, I mean the artist's name. Richie. Uh... Rich, Richie Vios, V-I-O-S. Thank you. And he it's might be someone to get involved you know with uh I, I can't think if he made is in the west western fed or not but but he'd be someone to invite to, you know to to demo or workshop or whatever because he's he's incredible so often if you're trying to get a painting into uh, an, a juried art show they say no varnish yeah 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 and i, I can put this behind glass still it's still the biggest in, you know, but uh, yeah, that's kind of a another finicky watercolor thing. I, I don't know why that's a no-no, but I guess it is. So, Stephen, with Can that, anybody, co pardon sorry, me? with that coax, is it like uh, honey? What is the consistency? Do you no, know? it's just, just like a paste, just like a pasty wax, like uh, almost like a car wax. If you're and familiar you, with that. Do you let it dry and then you buff it? Well, I just... Uh, here, I'll, I'll show you the can. Yeah, I just I just get it on and just start buffing it and buff it down. And, and I don't necessarily have to let it dry. But you buff it out and... Oh, wrong way. Everything's backwards on here. Can y'all see that? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. And this is at the Blick door. I forget how much the price is. Ten or twelve bucks for this can, if I if I'm thinking right. Not too expensive. And I keep the the rag that I uh, I just keep that rag inside there. It keeps it moist. That way, I don't have to like uh, waste a lot of it by um, charging up another rag. Because you got to get your rag kind of saturated with it, and it goes on a lot easier. And no, it doesn't mess with the watercolor. And another way I've varnished before, um, I'll spray it with a fixative, like a drawing fixative, and then I can spray it with uh, uh, acrylic coating. So, but if I just spray straight on the acrylic, you know, the acrylic coating, it it does make things bleed a little bit. So, yeah. have I got everybody's question over there? Did, did I miss any? Looks like I got them all. Okay. Thank you so very much. Let's give him a hand. Thank you.
<laughs> thank you so much. That was absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Roxanne. And thank, thank you, all, Roxanne. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Okay, and so all right. Much. Go enjoy the rest of your night, okay? Off we go. Good night. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks, you, Joe Watercolor. <laughs>